Hello, Verbling.com members. We are going to be working on our English this hour. <laughs> we are going to be reading about a subject that personally I find interesting, and it is the uh, invasive species that some environments and some countries have. So these are animal plant or insect species that have uh, come into a, a foreign environment and are doing damage. And so, hello, we see some new people who have joined. And uh, you, you are connecting with Verbling.com where you can practice your English instantly. And I wanted to uh, say to everyone that uh, I have uploaded a file that I have prepared that we will be reading. It's called File GW6161. And uh, you can find this at the verbling.com website uh, on the live pages. And uh, if you look for the information about this class, you should see the link that will allow you to download this document. All right. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to say hello to people uh, to give them a chance to introduce themselves. And I would like to ask each person to please tell us what, uh, uh, how is your natural environment where you live? Is your natural environment uh, in good condition or are there some serious problems with your natural environment? And so, James, hello, how are you? Now, you need to turn on your microphone now. So if you can click on the icon of the microphone on the Google Hangout screen, there is a small image of a, of a microphone, you need to click on that to turn on your microphone. Hi. Yes, hello. We can, can you hear, hear me? I'm James. Hi, where, where are you connecting from, James? Um, I'm connecting from Thailand, Bangkok. Ah, great. And so, could you tell us, what is the natural environment like in Thailand? Humid, I guess. Mm -hmm. Very hot, yeah. And uh, is it in good condition? Is it healthy, yes. the natural environment? It's healthy. Yeah, I love it. Ah, great. Yeah, so you enjoy spending time out in nature? Yep, I, I love nature. Okay. I love and, beaches uh, and, and mountains go ahead. and everything. All right. Yeah. Excellent. And so, uh, is are there any foreign animal, insect, or plant species that are doing a lot of damage in Thailand? I I I have no idea about this. Okay. Sorry. All right. No, no. But if you don't know of any species, then that probably means that there aren't any. So great. Thank you, James. Welcome to the class. Nice to meet you. Uh, and you. Rosa Maria, are you there? Yes, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, good. And so, could you please tell the group where you're connecting from? <clears throat> I'm from Spain. Yes, I'm, and I'm connecting in Spain. I'm from Spain. Okay, great. And please yeah. tell us, uh, uh, is the what is the natural environment like where you live? And is it in good condition? Is it healthy? Depends, for example, the environment, the, the places in Spain. For example, is if a small mountain mm -hmm. is more pollution, and if it's big and have a low, it's more healthy. It's it's healthier. Yes, it's healthier than the others. Yeah. Now, sorry, I didn't understand what you meant by mountains. Uh, mountains. Okay. Yeah, but you I said write. higher up. 
it's healthier or lower down? I, I didn't quite understand, sorry. Small and big. Yes. Smaller and bigger mountains? Yes, this is the difference. The smaller mountains are <coughs> very... Um, take care. The people take care more. Oh, than I the, see. Okay. Okay. And for example, right, this summer... And, and this summer we... Mm -hmm. Okay, this summer we have a lot of problems with the mountains because have a lot of fires. Ah, okay. Right. And so uh, lots because of forest fires. Because in Spain in summer it's very hot. Yes, and very dry. Okay. Oh, great. Yes. And we're, we're talking about invasive species. So these are plants, animals, insects from other parts of the world that have come to Spain and are having a negative impact. Are you aware of any of those? Yes, I, I know one case, but, but in English, it, I don't know the name. It's okay. a kind of, of, of tree. It's a kind of tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Eucalypto. Oh, eucalyptus. Yes. Eucalyptus trees. In the north of Spain. In the north of Spain. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a great example. I've, I've heard of that. Excellent. And uh, I'd like to move on uh, to Valentin. Hello, welcome. Yeah, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Uh, please tell us, where are you connecting from? I'm from uh, Brussels in Belgium. Ah, okay, welcome. And uh, could you tell us about the natural environment in Belgium? Is it healthy? Uh, Is it in good condition? Oh, um, uh, most of you must know uh, this small country is, is flat one. Uh, mm -hmm. In the south part of the country, it, there are many forests. Mm -hmm. But in the other part, most of the land is cultivated. And uh, but the forests, the area of forests that is in good condition, it's a it's a healthy natural environment. Is yeah, it's quite so, and uh, I think that they are really doing a quite good job in trying to to preserve the uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the fauna. Okay. Yes, the and animals. Then, mm -hmm. Yeah, the animals. And um, yeah, it's I okay. Think, yeah. And have you heard of any problems of a foreign invasive species establishing itself in Belgium and causing problems? Um, no, no, I have no oh. idea about that. No, I no, think okay. We have the uh, the common problems of you know, countries like these uh, in the area, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Okay, no, great, thank you. Welcome. And I'd like to say hello to Florin. Hello. Where are I'm, you connecting from? I'm from Romania, from okay. Eastern Europe. Oh, great, great. So please tell me, uh, what kind of condition is the natural environment where you live? Is it in, uh, is it in good condition? Um, yes, I think so. Although I live in uh, the capital of Romania, okay, and the only thing that uh, bothers me it's the dust during the summer because it's really mm. hot here. Okay, so very dry and hot, and there's a yeah. lot of dust. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, what sort of areas? What kind of environments does Romania have? Uh, I'm assuming forests and some mountains. Yes, Lakes, we, rivers. Yes, uh, we have um, Carpathians mountains. Okay, and we also have a flat uh, ground. Uh, a flat area. Okay. A flat area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And have you heard of any foreign invasive animals, insects, or plants that are doing damage mm. in Romania? No, but maybe I'm not updated about this mm -hmm. subject. 
No, it, it's uh, usually if there's a big problem, there is a lot of public information about these species. But that's what we're going to be reading about. And I just wanted to uh, remind people that there is a document that I have prepared for us. It's called File GW60, <laughs> 62. Uh, let me just check the number because I always forget. Uh, no, it's 61. So File GW61, and you can find that at the verbling.com website on the uh, live classes page. And so Marek is saying that uh, Romania has beautiful mountains and uh, the uh, Duna River, of course. All right, excellent. Okay, and so I'd like to say hello to Hamdi. Welcome. Yes, hello, Jim. Uh, tell the group where you're connecting from. I'm uh, living in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, but I'm okay. Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And how about the environment? What what would you like to talk about? Uh, Egypt or Saudi Arabia? The natural environment? The Egypt, because uh, mm -hmm. I am living in a place is um, uh, uh, this is this is a place is uh, agricultural area. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of a lot of problem uh, during the harvest time because the farmers going to uh, burn the hay of rice. Okay. This make uh, 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 a huge uh, cloud of, uh, of smoke, and this very dangerous for people who has uh, uh, allergy. Right, so and, and people very, who have um, bur uh, breathing problems. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Yeah. So it's they burn the crops before the harvest no, or after? after? After. Yeah. Yeah. Burning the fields. Yeah. Yeah. That's would, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so the impact that agriculture has. Now it, I know that there are some amazing uh, different environments in Egypt. People told me, students have told me that they're scuba diving and beautiful <laughs> wetlands, etc. Uh, do you know of any foreign invasive species that are causing problems in Egypt? Plants no? or, yeah, Hamdi? Uh, plants yes. or animals, insects that have come from other S Sorry, areas. I didn't get it. It was a yeah. problem with the transmission, please. Can yeah, we're, we're talking up? about invasive species. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, causing problems in Egypt. This is maybe in, uh, as you mentioned, in uh, this is diving areas. Yeah. The, yeah. This is the people destroyed the many, many beautiful uh, things in the sea. Like uh, you know, this is. Uh, um, I'm not remember the name English, but it's. Uh, the, 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 you know, this is it was a, a virgin places, but now became right. very bad now. So the impact of people. Yeah, that's yeah, that's because of yeah. people there, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. No, good. And what we'll be focusing on today is uh, our species of animals, plants, or insects that have come into a new environment, and we also want to sort of talk about the idea of keeping maintaining a balance in the environment. So if you get too many of one animal, it usually has an impact on other populations. So great. Nice to talk with you. And we've spoken with James, uh, uh, and I'm just going to try and say hello to people. So Omar, hello. Omar, are you there? I, I muted your microphone. Uh, yes, here I am, teacher. So it has been really impossible to hear because there are... Now, so you may need to turn off the transmission that's coming from your Verbling web page. You can actually close the Verbling.com page. Yeah. And, and so uh, try and, and sort that out, Omar. I'll, I'll come back in a minute. And I'd like to say hello to Sai. Are you there? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, teacher. We'll come back in a minute. I will try. Great. Oh. Yeah. Hello, sir. Sorry, uh, Sai, are you there? It, 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 yes, teacher. Yes, here I am. <laughs> okay, Omar, uh, are you ready then? 
Can, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, loud and clear. Okay, great. So please, um, I know uh, that you're, you're connecting from Panama, and so uh, how is the condition of the natural environment in, in Panama? Oh, uh, but might but my, my, you explain to me how can I do that? No, uh, sorry. I don't understand. No, okay. Yeah, Omar, I'll, uh, you need to close the verbling page. Okay, and and I will I will come back to you in a minute. I'll I'll come back. Yeah, see if you can eliminate the echo. And and so uh, there's a person at the end. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the alphabet. You you have your video on. Mitri, Mitri, hello. Yeah, Mitri. Uh, hello. Uh -huh. well, welcome. Oh. <laughs> Please tell the group uh, where you're connecting from. Uh, I live in Russia. I'm from Russia. Okay. Well, uh, there are a lot of uh, forests in Russia, mm -hmm. so and uh, they are very dangerous, uh, especially in spring and autumn. And so there are a lot of different dangerous insects uh, in our forests. Uh, for example, uh, mites. Yes, mites. Okay. Um, uh, now, dangerous uh, to you or dangerous to the forest? Uh, no, I don't think that they are dangerous to the forest. Uh, they oh, are no, dangerous to people. To, okay. uh -huh, to people, but uh, sometimes yeah. uh, we have a big problems with uh, so-called, I don't know the right name for this insect, no, maybe, mosquitoes? maybe ticks? mosquitoes. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, mosquitoes some, are flying. Uh -huh. There are Sometimes there are a lot of mil millions of them maybe, and they eat everything on their path. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we we have the same problem in Canada, where uh -huh. literally there will be thousands of mosquitoes attacking you, trying to and, uh, and, bite you. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and nature and everything, everything. So I, I okay. think that they are very dang uh, okay. dangerous for now, nature too. Now what I'm what I'm talking about though is something that's dangerous to the forest. Uh, are there any main dangers to the environment where you live? Uh, no, I don't think that there is something very dangerous to the environment. I think that okay. uh, everything is uh, in balance here. Oh, okay, yeah, great. Good news. Mm -hmm. All right, and Esther, I'd like to say hello to you. Hi, I'm Esther. I'm from Spain. Mm -hmm. And the question is, sorry? Yes, uh, what is the condition of the natural environment where you live? Is it healthy? Is it in balance? And we're specifically talking about foreign species that have invaded a new environment and are causing problem. Okay, well, in Spain, I mm -hmm. in Spain, I think that we don't have a healthy environment mm -hmm. because we have a lot of popu no, population. No. Um, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of people, or we you have a big population. Yeah, and mm -hmm. a big pollution. The car, okay. a lot of transport, and I think that that we destroy our environment. Right, the impact of man. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then what is the in natural environment near where you live? Is it very dry, or is it uh, forests? Uh, what is it like? It's a forest. Okay, and it's uh, more or less in good condition. Mm, no, because a lot of people in the summer go to this forest and the uh, barbecue uh -huh. and destroy and don't care the the forest. Okay, they they don't. Yeah, no, well, that's too bad. Okay, but uh, a lot of places are dealing with that. And then I'd like to say hello to uh, Helpis. Helpis, are you there? Okay, and so I don't hear from you, uh, and so let's let's get to work. Let's uh, open up the document, file GW61, and again, what I wanted to focus on was the impact of these foreign invading species. Uh, we're going to talk about some that I have heard of, and a couple of the of them are causing problems in Canada one of them where I live, 
and but this first one is causing problems in uh, Australia and other areas and so Esther could you please read the name of this animal here <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah go ahead please cane toad yes cane toad mm -hmm. and this information is from Wikipedia look at the size of this toad and in, in English toads live on land and frogs which are similar animals live in the water almost entirely in the water okay and here are, here's a picture of the adult male and the adult female and they are originally from well places like Panama but they have been introduced in Australia by man purposefully and they are causing a huge amount of problems and so Esther could you read this information for us please yeah, uh, the cane toad is a large terrestrial toad which is native to Central and South America, but has been introduced to various to various islands through, throughout 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 Oceania and the Caribbean. It's a member of a family which includes many different true toad species found throughout Central and South America. The cane toad is a prolific breeder. Females lie single clumps, spawns, spawns, yeah, spawns mm -hmm. with thousands of eggs. Its reproductive success is partly because of opportunistic feeding. It has an unusual diet of both dead and living mother. Adults average. Uh, yeah, and and I'll just get you to stop there. Uh, or okay. yeah, no, if you could if you could finish this, please. Uh, uh, so adults uh, average ten to fifteen centimeters. In length, the largest recorded spaceman weighs uh, two, two point point? six, two point point six five. Six five. Yeah, good. 2.65 is what we say. Okay, kilos with a length of uh, 38 centimeters from snow to bend. Okay, now the idea of that is if I can throw, so from the snout is the nose. And the vent is referring to the end of the animal's body. So we're talking about 38, was it 38 centimeters here, this measurement. So not even measuring the legs, but uh, just an amazing, <laughs> amazingly huge animal. Uh, and so um, there was some very specific uh, vocabulary about amphibians and toads. Just uh, to help you with the pronunciation of islands, we never pronounce the S. The S is completely silent. So islands, islands. Okay. And a prolific breeder means that they have, well, thousands of offspring or babies. Thousands. They lay thousands of eggs. And it's something, it has a very uh, unusual diet where it actually will eat dead um, material dead food, uh, dead animals for example, or dead insects, which other toads don't do. So it's very successful in that it can eat live prey or dead material. So great. Now uh, let's move on to uh, Florin. Could you read this information please? Um, the cane toad is an old species. A fossil toad from Colombia is in this distinguishable form modern cane toads from northern South America. The cane toad has poison glands and the tadpoles, Tadpole. are, tadpoles are uh, highly toxic uh, to most animals if uh, ingested. Because of its uh, voracious appetite the cane toad has been introduced to many regions of the Pacific and the Car Caribbean islands as a method of agricultural pest control. The species derives its common name from its use against the cane beetle. The cane toad is now uh, considered a pest and an invasive invasive species in, in, mo invasive? in many invasive spaces in many of its introduced regions of a particular concern is its toxic uh, skin 
which kills many animals, native predators, and otherwise when ingested. Okay, and so how did the toad, how did this toad get to Australia, for example? Could somebody repeat that? Uh, they're from Central and South America, but how did the toad get to Australia, for example? Did somebody understand that information? I, I, and I need somebody. I, I promise I'll help you. <laughs> yes, do you have an idea, Florin? Uh, I think someone took it. Yes. A, a man or something. Right, so people moved the toad, took the animal there, and released it. But why? I would say something about... Yes? Yeah, it was taken there because they they have a problem with uh, a sort of beetle. Yes, an insect. And and, and uh, the toad uh, was put in there to 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 eat those beetles. Yeah, and I'm sure it has to do with the sugar cane industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People growing sugar cane, and so it was introduced on purpose for pest control. Yeah. This is the idea where it would exactly, I'm just repeating what you said, Valentin, but it was uh, there to eat the uh, cane beetle, which obviously ate the sugar cane. Yeah. But now it's causing more problems <laughs> than it's solved. And uh, people's dogs, for example, are dying because uh, they're being poisoned because they try to eat these uh, toads. And all right. Great. I, I, it's Go ahead, please. Yeah, it seems it seems it's something like the case of the of um, ra ra rabbits being introduced there too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rabbits are a very serious problem in many areas, and again, they may not be doing a lot of damage to the environment, although they do, but they just completely unbalance the uh, the the environment, the, the natural environment. So the cane toad. So if you're ever in Australia <laughs> or in Panama, don't pick up one of the cane toads. It's toxic. It's poisonous. All right, and this plant, uh, let's, we don't need to say the Latin name unless somebody's interested in that. I call it milfoil. Now this is a plant that's causing problems where I'm from uh, in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, near British Columbia in our lakes, our freshwater lakes and rivers. Hamdi, could you read about this, please? Yeah, for sure. Water milfoil is a genus of about 69 species of uh, freshwater plants. Species? It's na species mm -hmm. of, yeah. Um, uh, its name comes from Latin. Mayro meaning too many to count, and the phylum meaning leaf. These sub submerged aquatic planet plants have fruits and leaves that can be an important food source for water for water fowl. Mm -hmm. Sorry, are you there? Just give him a second. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, no, he's gone. All right, and so, James, could you please uh, take over for us and, and read this, please? Okay, from, from, from which paragraph? Uh, yeah, could you uh, start with these submersed aquatic plants? These submersed aquatic plants have fruit and leaves that can be an imported, important food for source for water bound. Which are true, though. Thought. Thought, which are thought. Which are thought to be an important source of seed and and calm. Clonal. Clonal, clonal dis dispersal. Yeah. Uh, sorry, just let me stop you there for a second, but I'm going to ask you to keep reading. Uh, just uh, these are are the way that the plant is moved from one area to another. 
and it grows in the water. It's an aquatic plant. And so they're thinking that waterfowl, which are birds that live in the water, like ducks, for example, so they eat it and they uh, move the seeds and little pieces of the plants. This is the idea where it's a clone. Uh, a little broken part of the plant will start growing in another place. Okay, and so how it moves from all these different areas. So could like, you read like, this this next place? Like, uh, is, is, is it like reproducing? Yes, by a, a, a method of cloning. Oh, I see. So, where, so, so when some, some part breaks and it falls to another place, it grows, becomes absolutely. another tree. Absolutely. Great. Okay. And uh, can you see the document? Uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. yeah. Good, thank you. Go ahead. In invasions and control, tree species have ag aggressively invaded lake natural water waves and illegitimation il channel in North Irrigation. America. Irrigation channel in North America in the U.S. state most effective implement control plants. Hello? Okay, great. Yeah, no, no, uh, we can yeah. hear you perfectly. <clears throat> Just let okay. me help you. So this plant, three species, have ag in aggressively invaded lakes, natural waterways like rivers, for example, and also irrigation canals. So these are special channels made by farmers to move Hello? water to irrigate plants. Sorry, what, what does irrigation mean? Irrigation is the concept of using putting water on fields to grow food. Oh. That's it. All right. And so let's, let's keep going here. And uh, excellent job. And so I'm with uh, 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 Jelpis. Joe yes. Mendez. Ah, hello. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, where are you connecting from? I am connecting to Mexico. Ah, from Mexico. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, could you please read this text for us? Okay. The weather spray in Basin, Eurasian water molecule, is often controlled with herbicide container. containing. Control can also be done through careful mechanical management, such as uh, which lakes nowhere. But this is a fermenting plant, and the small pieces may grow bad. Uh, please continue. Okay, one minute. Okay. In 2007. Uh, in 2007, Mildrebury College reported that an aquatic wave, which ate nothing but milfoil, was at an effective weapon against it. Okay, great. All right, now we have uh, some some common language here, and so the Eurasian milfoil is the water plant that I know of. Herbicide is a toxin that kills plants. Uh, also, they can carefully use mechanical machines that work like lawnmowers. And I'm just going to ask everybody to please keep their microphones muted. And so, uh, because you are creating uh, noise and sound coming from your microphone. So everyone, please, needs to keep their, their microphone muted, uh, unless, of course, it's, it's your turn to speak. And so, uh, that using it to, to cut the plants out of the water. Let me just quickly move down. Here's a picture of one of the machines it's used to remove the plants from the water. And you can see that the plant just simply fills the water. It's an, it's an, increase, an incredibly aggressive plant that just literally takes over the bottom of the lake or wherever it's introduced. And so that's why it's causing so many problems, is it just absolutely fills up the water. And now what I wanted to do was to also talk about this idea. A weevil is an insect. And so 
uh, so what they're saying is that they they're thinking that maybe they will introduce this aquatic insect because it eats the milfoil but I wonder if that's going to cause another problem <laughs> okay so this is the problem uh, and so we've got a big piece of reading for Nader are you there hello Nader Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't hear you, so Rosa Maria, could you read this for us? Yes. Please, go ahead. Since, roughly Since. Two, since, since roughly 2,000 invasive mindfuls have been managed by hand harvesting. Several organizations in the, in the New England state have undertaken successful, like why, hand harvesting, Management programs. Periodic maintenance is necessary. The spices cannot be completely eradicated once established, but it can be reduced to manageable levels. Well trained drivers with proper techniques have ex effectively controlled mindful and maintained lakes, such as in the I do gang park in northern New York where chemicals, magical harvesters, and other managing techniques are banned as disruptive. Disruptive. Okay, good. And let me help you out with a little bit of uh, the pronunciation. So we're talking about people literally pulling the plants out by hand. These are divers, so these are scuba divers people breathing air from tanks, working underwater, techniques, maintained, chemicals, and mechanical. So the CH is produced, uh, sorry, is pronounced as a K, as a K sound. Chemicals and mechanical harvesting. Chemicals and mechanicals. Yeah, great. And they're saying that in parks, they don't want to use chemicals or uh, or the mechanical techniques so they use people who are properly trained to go in the water and literally pull the plants out by hand so you can imagine how expensive that must be so again another invasive species that has no natural predators nothing eats it and so it grows out of control and takes over the environment. All right, and so I wanted to move on to another species that's causing lots of problems. And so let's go to uh, uh, Valentin. Could you please read this for us? I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> uh, with, uh, okay. do, you, do you see the text on the screen? Yeah, I have it. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so I did. Um, okay, the zebra, a muscle. Okay, uh, just a second. Great. Uh, okay, uh, here we are. So um, okay. the zebra muscle is a small freshwater muscle. This species was originally native from the streams of southern Russia. However, it has been accidentally introduced in many other areas and had become an invasive species in many different countries worldwide. Okay, so, great. Um, Go ahead, please. Superficially resemble marine mussels. Unlike them, are attached to solid substrates with strong fibers. Zebra mussels get their name from a striped Stripe? Pattern stripe pattern which is commonly seen on their shells though not all shells bear this pattern they are usually about the size of a fingernail but can grow to a maximum length of nearly five centimeters the shape of the shell is also some uh, somewhat uh, uh, i'm looking for <laughs> uh, okay yeah, uh, just just a second. Um, no, no, but there's just two words left. Somewhat variable. Um, sorry, but uh, 
Oh, yeah. No, no, that's fine. It, that's the end of the reading. Thank you. Great job. Okay. okay. And I just wanted to cover with people, marine refers to the ocean. So okay. zebra mussels uh, resemble, they look like uh, mussels from the ocean, and they are attached to objects, solid objects, with these fibers here, which are called byssus. Uh, you know, these are the strong fibers that they attach to. Yeah. All right, and that's this is a, a picture of the shell. And zebras are the animals, the horse-like animals in Africa, and so this is the common name because you have black and white stripes. All right, and so here's a sign advising boaters on how to prevent the spread of the zebra mussels. And so what I wanted to do was to have somebody uh, read this information. And so, yes, uh, Mitri, this is perfect. They're, they're coming from Russia and invading the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, please, Mitri. Uh, the native distribution of the species is in the Black Sea and Caspian Sea in Eurasia. Zebra mussels have become an uh, invasive species in North America, Great Britain, Ireland, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. They disrupt their ecosystems and damage harbors and waterways, ships and boats, and water treatment and power plants. Water treatment plants are most impacted because the water intakes bring the uh, microscopic free swimming uh, levy directly into the facilities. The zebra mussels also cling onto pipes under the water and clog them. Yeah, great. Okay, good. And uh, I'm just going to, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm a little stuck here. So I, I hope people are, are, are okay uh, with the information there. I'm actually going to just uh, skip that part there. Uh, yeah, too, too much. Uh, so let's let's skip that. Well, just that it has a really uh, a very expensive. Um, uh, sorry, it has a large economic impact. So I wanted to show this picture here. This is a shopping cart, a metal shopping cart that was obviously dropped and left in the water, and it's actually absolutely covered with these mussels. They just grow everywhere. They attach to everything and grow everywhere. Uh, here are the mussels here. And this is a, uh, a, a, um, a public information campaign to try and inform people to make sure to remove them from their boats. This is what happens is the, the, uh, the milfoil weed also, little pieces of the plants, can attach to the motor of boats, they can attach to the wheels on the trailer, and these little mussels can grow on the sides of boats, and so people end up moving them from one body of water to the next. And then you can see this pipe. So this is the problem with water treatment plants and power plants, is the mussels grow inside the pipes, and they absolutely clog the pipes they block the pipes and so it's a huge problem and what's what's this situation does anybody can anybody recognize what this is what what's this a picture of does anybody know lobster <laughs> yeah a little lobster uh, and then in fresh water they're called crayfish and so the poor little crayfish is covered with these zebra mussels. So they just grow on everything. You just can't stop them from growing on things. And so that's, that's the zebra mussel, which has had uh, a huge negative impact on uh, a lot of the freshwater areas in, in, in Canada and the United States. It's in Europe as well. But uh, we're talking about the Great Lakes. Uh, they've been introduced to the Great Lakes. And so uh, that's had a, a huge impact. All right. So another invasive species that's causing lots of problems worldwide. And then I really like this story. Now, I apologize. The reading in this story is a little advanced, but it's about the evil cats. <laughs> and so I really like this story. 
is I don't like cats. So uh, Esther, could you begin reading this, please? The cats are evil. Why New Zealand <laughs> is right to consider to consider banning them in order to save its wildlife? Okay, good. And we say e evil. Evil. Yes, and this is an evil cat. I love that picture. Okay, so we're saying bye bye, kitty. Uh, could you read this for us, please, Esther? Yeah. Do you know what animal makes a good pet? No animal. Dogs will beat you. Snakes <laughs> will asphyxiate you. But perhaps the worst pet of all, environmentally speaking, is a cat. Domesticated cats started out as parasites on human civilization. Unlike other species, and admit, admittedly to their credit, they domesticated themselves. When humans started growing grain, the crops attract, attracted rodents that attracted cats. Will cats evolve into house cats? Uh, please, uh, yeah, could you please go ahead? Yeah. Just and, this they, bit. and they were quite useful for thousands of years, killing this, the disease. Disease? Disease? disease. Disease, ridden rats and mice, and protecting our food stockpiles. Okay, great. Now let's let's just stop there for a second. I'm going to move this down. So uh, now we're talking about New Zealand, and they're thinking about. Well, I don't know how serious this is, but people are talking about uh, banning cats, eliminating cats from the country to try to protect their wild natural animals. Uh, okay, and so uh, we're talking about, uh, oh, just bite. The pronunciation is bite. So dogs will bite you, and uh, cats obviously became part of human communities, uh, according to the author, because they uh, killed rats and mice and protected our food. But now, I, what I would like to do is to move on to the next person. And so we have a ah, new person. Faisal, are you there? Hello, Faisal. Yes, I am here. Yes, hello, welcome. Where, where are you connecting oh, thank you, from? Thank you, I'm connecting from Saudi Arabia. Okay, welcome. So could you read this for us, please? Do you see okay. the text on the screen? A little bit, but it's a uh, disturbance in there. Yeah, okay. I, I'm sorry, what, okay, what I'll do is I'll I move on. Now, you can download the document. It's called File GW61. Okay. So uh, I'll, okay. I'll put that in the chat box for you. Oh, there it is already in the, in the chat box. With uh, Ismail has put okay. that in there. Okay, so thank you. I'll I'll uh, I'll check on you later and next time. Uh, Florin, okay. could you read could you read this for us, please? Yes. Okay. Thank you. But now that we have industrial farming, reliable food storage, and mostly mouse-proof houses, cats are mere uh, parasites again. Playful and often affectionate parasites, sure and adorable when young, but a scourge on the landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, please continue. An economist in New Zealand named Gareth Morgan has made the logical and quite correct case that his island nation should eliminate its cats in order to protect its endangered birds. He means uh, elimination in the most human way possible. Existing pets should be sprayed and neutered and allowed to live out their lives, but no new cats should be allowed to be born or imported. And I'll get you to stop there. Thank you. Let me uh, help out with some uh, pronunciation and some vocabulary. And again, all of the students are welcome to ask questions. So, mere, mere parasites again. And just I, I, I think that people may know what the what the ver, uh, the term parasites is. Uh, these are animals that live off other animals, but it has a very negative connotation in English. So the author is using the word parasites to criticize cats in sort of a joking manner, but 
because she's talking about the fact that they are affectionate or loving parasites, but they are still parasites. <laughs> and a, a scourge on the landscape, a scourge is something that's very negative and bad and has a very bad impact. Okay? The, the and pronunciation... Mean, yeah, and sorry? Mean parasites means small parasites? Well, it doesn't have to be small, but usually parasites are small. Yeah, I don't know the meaning of the word mere. Oh, mere uh, means simply or oh, okay. uh, directly or only. Uh, so, it, yeah, it, it's a way of it's used here to um, modify parasites. So because we don't need them to kill uh, rats and mice anymore to protect our food, they just simply become parasites again. Okay, 100% okay. parasites again. That's the idea. The uh, pronunciation of humane and then spaying and neutering of animals is to sterilize them so that they cannot have babies, that, so that they cannot uh, reproduce. So that's when you spay and neuter, sorry, when you spay and neuter cats and dogs, this is to stop them from reproducing. Okay, and so uh, let's, let's move on then. And so uh, where are we here? Ah, great. Uh, we're with uh, James again. Hello, James. Yep. Great. Yeah, Could you read this for us, please? Um, he is not advocating that people poison funeral cat as feral. farmers. Feral cat as farmers researchers at their Smithsonian. Smithsonian nation sue was convicted of doing a, a few years ago northern nor does he say people should shoot them as particularly avoiding avid a, avid bird watchers have done that would be really wrong. Morgan okay. points out that your cat is actually a friendly neighbor. Sierra Kuehler, his cat to go. Uh, sorry, or... uh, I'm going to get you to stop there. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to uh, review that information. And so this man is not saying that cats should be poisoned or shot with guns like some people do, but he says that it's just simply the fact that cats are your friendly neighborhood serial killer and that cats uh, kill a lot of little natural uh, and native animals. And we're, we're running out of time uh, and so what I'd like to do is just to turn off the screen share and, and get a, a reaction from people. And so we've been talking about foreign species causing damage and changing the balance of the local environment. And then the last story, talking about cats in the fact that cats kill birds and little mice and little snakes and little reptiles. And so in, in New Zealand, that's especially bad because their native birds don't fly. Their native birds live on the ground and they build their nests on the ground, and so they can't defend themselves against the cats. And so what I'd like to do is to say, uh, 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 Jelpis, uh, do you have any comments about uh, the animals, about the information that we read, about any situation in Mexico? When um, I think that there are a lot of dogs in the street, um, mm. It's a problem because when you are 18, uh, a lot of a lot of dogs want uh, beat you um, and want and, and want, want, uh, want your your food uh, <laughs> and are around around you um, is is uh, uncomfortable. 
Yeah, very uncomfortable. Right. Okay. And are there is there anyone talking about talking seriously about solving the problem and getting rid of the street dogs? Uh, what is the questions? Yeah, is anyone making serious plans to remove or get rid of the street dogs? I don't know if uh, there are there is a plan, but. Uh, Every day there are more, more dogs in the, in the street, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, sorry, we have someone new. Richard, welcome. But uh, I'd like to just stay with the students who have been part of the class. We're just going to end the class in less than five minutes. Uh, Rosa Maria, do you have a comment? Yes. In Spain, we, we have a problem with pigeons. With pigeons? Yes. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> there are in a lot of cities and <laughs> smell a lot, a lot, and, yeah. and it's no good. Right, and and people feed them. Feed them. Yeah, people give them food. Yes, a lot right. of food, bread, and other other things. Right, and these are these are birds, and and they do a lot of damage to buildings with their yes. waste. Yeah, very dirty. I've also heard that the the waste that they excrete is very unhealthy. That it, it can cause diseases. In in one city in Spain, this summer uh, the park um, was closed mm. uh, because the the period because the right. park okay. is very dirty. Um, right. It's no good for our health. Yeah. Un unhealthy. Yeah, no good for your health. For yes, your help, no. uh, okay. Valentin, uh, a comment from you, please. Uh, you need to turn on your microphone. Uh, I often mute people's microphones. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I find the measure quite uh, cruel. Uh huh. Um, I would say uh, I conceive of uh, uh, something like. Um, Limiting the number and taking care of those staying alive, but not to the cats. Every one of them. Is yeah. No. 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 Well, they're talking about phasing them out, I guess. Uh, the other thing they ask cat owners to do is keep the cats in the house, and and actually, a lot of animal um, protectionists say that cats should live inside the house, not outside. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Do you have a cat, Valentin? Uh, no. no. I have no <laughs> okay. cats. Okay. I had had in the past uh, dogs. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, great. Okay. Excellent. Mitri, do you have a, a, a comment? Mm -hmm. Well, it was pretty unusual and interesting topic, and I didn't even uh, think about that before, but um, I was really surprised about banning cats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, yeah. Well, I think that it is really a great problem, uh, so-called invasive species. And but another problem, as we can see, is that when people try to reduce or eradicate them, they causes uh, another problem. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. and that's the problem too. And this is another topic. <laughs> no, no, no. But good. I love I love your opinion because it's just. We, we have the Eurasian milfoil, that plant, and now we're going to bring in an insect that eats that, no, and then they start the eating something face. else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Esther, go ahead, please. Sorry, Richard, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, get a final comment from the students who have participated in the class. Uh, uh, go ahead, Esther. Okay. Uh, it's the, the same comment that, say, uh, Rosa Maria, I think. Ah, uh, yes. In With Spain, the the mo the, the, in Spain, the most important problem is about pigeons because a lot of people, all people normally, uh, give uh, give bread and or rice, and it's a problem because the solution is that uh, try to put another bird to extinct eradicate the pigeon. Ah, oh, okay, right, okay. So, uh, is that the idea? Yeah, yeah, is that? Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> what what kind of bird is that though? Or what kind of animal? Or bird? Like hawks? I don't know, Rosa Maria. Do you know the name of the? <laughs> oh, okay. 
I don't have idea. I don't know this. Yeah. <laughs> this bear. Uh, 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 yeah, in Barcelona, him? yeah. In another cities, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. I wanted to get a final comment from Florin. Um, <clears throat> yes. Okay. I I think this subject was really interesting. Uh, we in my country, we especially in my town, we have we had we have a lot of problem with uh, dogs mm -hmm. because. We there are a lot of uh, love uh, um, a lot of people who loves dogs, and um, they uh, we tried. I mean, the mayor tried to catch all those dogs because they, most of them are harmless. But uh, there were some cases when they tried to defend their territory and attack some people. Yeah. And um, because we have uh, a lot of organization, uh, they uh, were against uh, catching this and putting into a shelter or something like that. Yeah, no, it, it's the same and, situation in many places in Latin America. Uh -huh. And I remember um, uh, there is a French actress, uh, Bridget Bardo. He, <laughs> okay. he he's a, a love. She's so she she's a, a yeah. love animal. She loves animals, and she came here to defend uh, those dogs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the problem. I mean, dogs also kill birds and other natural animals. That that's what I don't understand. I love animals, but I love wild animals. Uh, uh, James, uh, can you? Uh, uh, do you have a final comment for us? Um, I'm I'm guessing the the species. Um, in invasive species are dangerous. With yeah, we 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 hardly had like um no much information about this because you know because we we're not aware of it. Sometimes we live in a big city. Sorry, we James, they, are you there? We we're not oh. aware of it. Yeah. 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 No, no, and and, and some not, of these not, plants. Not aware. Yeah. We 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 not aware. Yeah. No. Uh, it, the the public has to be aware of these of these yeah. situations for sure. So it's interesting. Yeah. And you know people have. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, as always, thank you to all of you for your participation. Great work on your reading, your pronunciation, and uh, understanding the vocabulary and the subject. You did an excellent job expressing your ideas. So Thank good you. luck with those invasive species. And remember, we need to defend the little natural creatures that belong in our <laughs> natural environments. <laughs> Thank so you. get rid of the cats. We, we don't like cats. <laughs> All right. So, or keep your cat in your house. Okay, there. I'm yeah. happy. <laughs> Take care, Bye. everybody. I hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And, and no more Russian zebra mussels invading the world. <laughs> Stop those Russian zebra mussels from invading.